Hello. Hi, did I jump too quickly off? No, no, it's all right. I think I tried to grab you at the same time. Yes, I'm here. Hi, how are you? Yeah, I'm good. How are you? Do you want to do a little, do you want to do a little introduction for those people who don't know me? Or shall I just introduce myself? You can introduce yourself. I'm John Luke Gage. Hi, everybody who doesn't know me. <laughs> sure, everyone knows who you are. Um, so you are... Oh, the echo there. Um, you were doing Anne Juliet in the West yes. Highlands before all of this happened. Before this. Um, how was that? Oh my god, amazing. Have you seen the show? I've seen Act One, because the night I kept... No, I didn't leave. There was a oh, show was it night. when the sound desk, like, exploded? I don't know. I don't think you were on. Okay. Um, Maybe I was on holiday. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. When I was on holiday, the sound desk failed or something. There was, like, an error. Right. Just as, was it just as really... Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, so... Yeah. Oh, so no. I, couldn't, I couldn't work out what happened, but... Um, yeah, no, I loved the first act. I just haven't had a chance to go back and see the second. Um, how does that compare to something like Bat Out of Hell? Oh my God, so different. I mean, just in the fact that it's like a comedy, it's so funny. And I've never done a comedy before, so like that has been so much fun to do. Um, the part is ridiculous. I mean, it's hard for you to, it's hard to say because you haven't seen it and that's when it gets really ridiculous is the second half. It kind of takes this whole turn and okay. Romeo's a bit of like a, a douchebag. I don't know if I can say that, but yeah. yeah. Um, so it's just so much fun to just play a character that is like so crazy and out of the box and yeah, yeah. You know, it, seems to, it seems to have got a real fan base behind it. Oh my God, so quickly. Why Within, do you think that is? I think because people know the music, like yeah. it, it, there's so many different generations. Like this music goes from like 30 years ago up to, up till like now with Ariana Grande. So there's just such a wide demographic of, of for its audience. Yeah. yeah. So like, the people people come knowing the the songs, and then also the more I guess serious theatre goers kind of want to know what the whole Romeo and Juliet twist is going to be about. So it is such a genius production like I'm so proud to be a part of it like when I read the script I was just like this is like nothing I've I've ever seen on the stage before I thought it was just the most amazing thing so I think people have just taken to it the way that we all have as well as a cast yeah and for people that haven't seen it what is the story so it kind of uh, so it's called Anne Juliet because it follows Juliet's life at the end of the play so Juliet is just about to take her own life because she's realized that Romeo's taken his own life, but she actually thinks, what if I actually just live my life instead? Like I've known this guy for four days. Mm -hmm. So um, <laughs> I've, got, <laughs> I've got my whole life ahead of me. I've, he's my only boyfriend that I've ever had. Uh, so it kind of follows her journey to finding love and self-discovery. And yeah, she just meets loads of different interesting characters along the way. There's so many different themes of um, like uh, LGBT themes and, uh, kind of, what's it called? Uh, like problems within the marriage. What is that word? Why can't I think of that word? Marital problems. Marital problems. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So there's just so many different themes. So it's um, I think it's yeah, it's it's a real roller coaster. Um, and we've had some questions coming up for you. Slightly random one. How do you deal with stress? Okay, Ex exercise actually is probably yeah. my my one thing. Like. I always find that when I when I do exercise the rest of the day I feel so much my head is just so much clearer yeah, yeah, yeah. and like that's not me saying that everyone needs to get up every day and work out because I do definitely have days where I'm like I can't be bothered and I, I want to just sit and watch Netflix mm -hmm. but it does that that's kind of my way for dealing with stress and anxiety yeah I get I get really like anxious as well before performances so but no, not like just an everyday performance, but like if it's the first night of a new show, I'll be like super anxious. So I have to just make sure that I like go for a run that day and like get myself like feeling calm. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's my thing. Or just finding finding something that kind of makes you zen, like cooking. I've got way more into cooking mm -hmm. lately during this isolation. Um, yeah. I think exercise is a good one. I mean, I'm not a big um, a big exerciser at all, but. No. Um, the good thing about all this is there's so many friends 
that are starting to do like uh, yoga classes on Zoom and all of these yeah. different things. So and even just going for a, even just going for a walk. That's yeah. still, that's still Social great. distancing though. Social distancing walk <laughs> to Marks and Spencers. Yeah. 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 yeah it's, uh, it's an interesting time, isn't it? But thank God that we've got, we live in a time where we've got um, social media like this, where we can stay in touch and, no. you know, theatre can live on in a way. It's kind of inspiring to see how, like, the theatre industry has just come together so much. Like, all of these private concerts in people's living rooms, like, I did one a couple of weeks ago and it was, like, the weirdest thing ever, but it's so nice to still give people something to, to watch and look forward to. Um, so yeah, I think it's kind of, it, I'm amazed and surprised at how the, the industry is still kind of carrying on during this time. I think, I think it goes, it's testament to how actors and creative people are, like, it's in the blood. Like, right. these people can't not we can't perform, stay. <laughs> yeah. they can't not yeah. sing, they can't not, so it really shows that people aren't doing this for the paycheck, they're doing this because they can't do anything else. Yeah, exactly. Um, so it's nice that at least there is an outlet for these people to be able to do like things like this and mm -hmm. screens and zooms and house parties and all these other things. Yeah, yeah. I've probably spoken to more people since I've been in isolation than I would have normally. Me too, and friends that like I kind of lost contact with as well. Yeah. Yeah, it's been so nice. We've done like um, those Zoom quizzes with like yeah, yeah, yeah. the Battle of Hell cast. We've got one tonight and like, I've not seen most of them for about a year because when you do finish shows, you kind of, you think everyone's going to still stay in touch and you normally stay in touch with a few people, but mm. people have their lives and you kind of just go about your own lives. But yeah, it's really nice to kind of like refresh those friendships again. Yeah, and I found even yeah. people that I've known for 10 years, I found I'm connecting with a lot more right. and actually getting to know them better than I have in 10 years. This is report, yeah. So I think it's interesting the way friendships are being affected. Like there are some people that were really good friends that I've not really spoken to. And really? other people okay. that I didn't speak to a lot, uh -huh. I'm now speaking to a lot. So it's really interesting. I guess it's, how... it depends on how people like deal with this like alone time. Yeah. Like some people just kind of like I guess being left alone and then uh, this is the time where the majority of people like are constantly texting each other like let's do stuff let's chat so yeah it's kind of yeah there's the two different sides of it it's really interesting but I kind of feel like this is depending on how you look at it I've, I'm kind of seeing it as almost a, a positive situation the, don't get me wrong the virus is not positive like I I, I wish this this was not happening but yeah. I think we can kind of use this time to like home in on on things and focus on areas that maybe we haven't given attention before, like relationships yeah. or maybe like projects that we maybe didn't have the time to work on before. Um, I'm like playing way more guitar than I ever have. So that's really great. So yeah, I think it's, yeah. You I was saying before um, with Amy Atkinson, it's a bit yeah. like going into retirement, like all the things, <laughs> like books that I've been meaning to read for years. Right. It's like, well, I'll read that when I retire, when I've got time. But now we've been given this chunk of time. I think we really need to appreciate it for what it is. It's uh -huh. an opportunity to really do some things that we wouldn't normally be able to do. So, Absolutely, yeah. yeah. I'm trying to make a, uh, a sock monkey. Oh yeah, I saw this earlier. It's looking good. Well, I think you're being I too gave up. I gave up because I thought it wasn't, but now I'm... No, it really to... is. Like, you've got the whole base and the legs. You just... How do you get the arms on? This is the problem. You kind of just have to sew them on. But I don't know okay. how... Uh, uh, what, you, like, fill it with... What, what do you fill it with, like? Yeah, so there's, like, um... Cotton wool, okay. Stuff. But... I think stick with it. I'm gonna have to, I think. I'm gonna have to finish it. Although I haven't, I haven't stitched it very well. So I think this is going to be my practice sock monkey. And then once I've <laughs> I'm going to buy You'll be selling them. You'll be doing a whole business by the end of lockdown. Yeah, maybe we could give them away as prizes. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so we've had some questions from people as well. Um, any funny moments on stage? Oh, God, cool. to me. Well, one night, so in and Juliet, one night, my entrance I fly in um I kind of ascend from heaven mm -hmm. um and the 
I think something went wrong with the um, automation desk. Um, I don't even know if I'm really supposed to be saying this, but I kind of just fell at about three times the speed that I normally do. And everybody on stage was freaking out because, and, and me, like I thought if I kept falling, I would have just smashed the, the ground. It could have been really bad. But um, luckily they pulled like the lever at the last minute. And then we had a show stop, but I was hanging there facing the audience while the show was stopping and the curtain hadn't come in. Oh, no. So I was just kind of hanging there staring at the audience. I think I was like cracking some jokes to the audience because I didn't know <laughs> how to cope with it. But yeah, that was very funny. I also got stuck in the bench. Most of the funny things normally involve me getting stuck in something, so. Okay. Yeah, yeah. What about in Bat Out of Hell? Bat Out of Hell, I, so one night I, um, that was a very energetic show and very energetic role. And I one day slid across the stage and um, fell into the pit, oh. but, but my hand was still holding myself up. So my hand was on the stage, my body was hanging in the pit and I just carried on singing the song, but like half hanging in the pit. and. Christina Bennington came over and like pulled me out and um yeah it's always it's always me getting in some kind of mess I'm quite clumsy but um it's you hear a lot of stories about people falling into the pit it's a Do dangerous you? place yeah yeah it happens more than you think see uh, I've never experienced it except for that it's, well, when I was really young like, we did high school musical like at our local drama school and the Troy Bolton fell into the pit and the whole pit oh, went yeah. on fire which was the like the scariest thing as like a six year old boy on the stage and like we just suddenly saw the, the piano was like on fire I don't know what happened it must have sparked um the whole audience got like evacuated it was mad oh um, my god yeah so that's the only other time I've seen it happen okay. <laughs> luckily, mine wasn't as bad luckily. that was a crazy one yeah. um now and Juliet is a jukebox musical if you yeah. create a jukebox musical of any artist easy you said it earlier actually it's Labyrinth. Oh. Yeah, David yeah. Bowie, he's like one of my favorite artists. But if I could make like a movie into a musical, it would be that 100%. Yeah. And the same, what you said, like Theatre Royal Drury Lane, like yeah. some massive theatre. And I would make it kind of like an immersive experience and maybe have like a whole labyrinth maze as you go in. Oh. It, could, it could be like, it could be mad madness. I think it would be great. That would be great. I watched it the other day. I watch it every few months. It's such a good film. Yeah. Do you like the never ending story as well? Not as much. Okay. Yeah, it's not um, as good, but it's that same genre, isn't it? I watched it yesterday. But yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, very much the same. I've got a t-shirt with the worm from Labyrinth on it. Oh, yeah. Uh, that says, come inside and meet the missus. Oh, nice. But I'd love, and I was talking, I interviewed Beverly Knight a few months ago, and I said she'd be a brilliant Jared if they were going to roll reverse it. Yeah. I think she'd be oh, great. Oh, gosh, she would actually. Role. Um, That's a good idea to roll reverse. Yeah, uh -huh. these days, it doesn't really matter, does it? I really want them to do a role reversal of six. Yeah. Just, I'd like to do that. Yeah, which one would you play? I think I'd be Catherine Howard, Amy Atkinson. Okay. That's Catherine Howard, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'd, I'd, be, so. I'd be Amy's part. Yeah. Maybe we can do a, a Zoom concert. Maybe we will. Maybe. There's mm. loads of... Uh, We've got to arrange something. Who knows what might happen. Um, if you could be on a desert island... Yeah. ...with three cast recordings you've had three cast recordings for the rest of your life okay you choose. and juliet just because it's full of box yeah. and it's kind of you're getting two in one with the whole pop songs as well so so yeah. definitely that and then i think rent because mm -hmm. rent was one of the first shows i did that it's, I feel like when I listen to that, it's really like nostalgic. I love that music so much. And I think the story behind it as well is just like the fact that obviously um, Jonathan Larson like passed away the night before the first show. Yeah. Like, that's so tragic. Um, so yeah, I love that soundtrack. And then I think something like a little bit more legit, like maybe Into the Woods. Mm -hmm. Love that show, love that soundtrack. Yeah. It's a long one as well, so you get your It's money. a long one, yeah, you get your money as well. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, something like always Sunday in the Park with George, just purely for the song Sunday, because I love, I love that song. That's one of my favourite musical theatre songs ever. Okay. Yeah. They're doing um, Into the Woods at the Old Vic this Christmas, I think. Are they? I think so. Oh, I hope that still all goes ahead. Well, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. And yeah. Sunday in the Park with George as well. When's that going yeah. to be? Yeah. July? June? July, yeah, which will probably be delayed a little bit, maybe. We'll see. 
We don't know, do we? That's the problem. Stay hopeful. <laughs> Um, so before I let you go, have you got any advice for people? At oh, somebody, sorry, sorry. I've just seen somebody said Hades Town question mark. I completely forgot. Hades Town would definitely. Ha so I'd have to get rid of. I'd have to get rid of one of the last ones and do Hades Town because that's my favourite show. Ever. Okay. I didn't yeah. see it in the West End. I saw it on Broadway though. Was it uh, amazing on Broadway? It was brilliant. It was yeah. Brilliant. And there's rumours, or there was rumours, that it was going to come back to the West End. I feel like it will. I mean, because of the success it's had over there, and it was so great when I saw it here, I think it will probably come back maybe next year, I'm hoping. Yeah, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed, yeah. Um, so any tips for people surviving isolation? What can people do? Um, I think find something that, like, distracts you, like, for a few hours, whether that's, like, cooking or baking or... Um, Dog puppet. Like, a sock puppet, <laughs> maybe learning like a musical instrument or a language, um, even like just doing something for a few hours a day. Like, of course, don't beat yourself up about sitting around watching movies. That's fine. That's absolutely fine. But I think if you give yourself a couple, an hour or two where you feel like you've done something productive, then you'll feel like you've achieved something that day. So yeah. no matter what it is, I think just like find something that you enjoy that distracts you. Amazing. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us today, Jordan. Thanks Have for a having great me. rest of your Sunday. You and, too. Um, speak to you soon. Yeah, speak to you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.